Introducing the D'Addario Auto Lock, made with locking strap ends for an easy to use clip on system. When you're done, just pull the latch and slide it off. Keep your guitar on lock with the Dario Auto Lock. Transitioning back to the guitar that you're holding, because I think most people that have seen you around town, whether it was at Candyland, I've seen you open for Ron Gallo, Thunder Pussy, it's always with Fancy. So tell me about Fancy's story. You know, I mean, scale model guitars, I mean, he's legendary in Nashville, and he's, you know, that's, that's what makes it, you know, a crazy difference for me and for a lot of artists who kind of forge their own trail and, and don't really fall into stereotypes and shit like that. Like, you really need those people to help you up. And, and I never had a nice guitar before Fancy. And luckily, Dave would, like, fix my guitars every time I would smash them, you know? <laughs> I was like, I would, like, br honestly, I feel like he just built this so he would stop having to work on my shitty guitars. But, yeah, I would bring him, like, these $200 guitars that I, like, jettisoned across the stage and, like, Dave, I, you know, I snapped the neck off, or Dave, the pickup's not working. <laughs> and he would hook me up and, and fix it, and then he's like, finally, he turned to me one day, and, you know, we're both from Illinois, so, like, uh, he, like, turned to me, so we have that kind of kindred, you know, Midwestern shit going, and he was like, he's like, uh, you want a nice guitar, LG? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't, it's like, you know, it's like pretty woman, it's like, <laughs> what, I, what would I do with it, you know? And uh, I went to visit my aunt, and my uncle had this, like, um, you know, really great uh, SG from the 60s. It was, like, when they were still called Les Paul Specials or whatever, and mm -hmm. it was, like, a natural finish, and, like, it was just, like, uh, it was just amazing. I was I had the Bigsby, and I was just, like, that's the one. Like, that's the fucking one I want. So I sent him a picture of it, and I was, like, this, that's the one I want, and... Um, and yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted Fancy across the fretboard because um, that's my favorite song about being white trash. Because, you know, yeah, you never like, you know, growing up reading guitar magazines and like, you know, fumbling around trying to play shit that went, you know, and learn. And I just would have never thought someone would have invested the time and energy into making a guitar for me. And he, this one, and the thing with Dave is, like, you really have to be very specific about what you want, and you really have to, like, be a part of the process with him, because he, he will make you exactly what you want if you, you know, do that, and, you know, I wanted a natural finish so it didn't look too clean and, and, like, new for too long, mm -hmm. so all he put on this was gun oil, and so it's literally probably gained two pounds solely just off my sweat and blood and spit and hot wax and beer that I've poured on it. I mean, I've only had it for six years and then look at it, you know, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's worn and torn. Yeah, and the ebony fretboard, it just feels like a Cadillac. It just feels so nice and I love the frets. They're, they're like, like tall and skinnies, I guess, which is not really something you want in Nashville. <laughs> But they're really great, and um, yeah, it just feels very luxurious, and I think he, I guess I've had it for six years, and I've toured probably at least 100 shows a year with it, and the, the neck, he hasn't adjusted the neck once. Oh, wow. And that's and, through the mountain. What about uh, the pickup? Is that something you requested? Is that something special there? Uh, he, he put this burst fucker one in here. Um, he put this burst bucker one in here and he was like, if you don't like it, just let me know. We'll swap it out. And I've, I've, I've always loved it. Um, and this was actually Ben from Fly Golden Eagles. This was his Bigsby and he didn't like the Bigsby because he's like, oh, it doesn't stay in tune. And I was like, who fuck cares? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't use a Bigsby like for its like intended use. I do a lot of like, you know. Like, I do a lot of, like, grand, like, strum out, like, boom, and then I'll also just, like, lift my guitar with it and do that. So it's, like, if I'm playing a Bigsby, like, it's party time. Like, I'm not worried about staying in tune. Um, but also, I mean, this guitar is so well built. I, I actually haven't been playing Fancy a lot because, you know, I've been playing this Telly that he built me um, more at home. But Fancy's kind of like a, she's a hot rod. You don't really take her out for Sunday drives, you know? So... Yeah, but, yeah, I love her. It, it's just, and it's, the most important thing for me was that it be very, very light because mm -hmm. my neck 
Like I was playing a, I was playing a Fender Jag Master. It was like the 30th anniversary Silver Sparkle one, and it was actually fucking dope, but it was so fucking heavy. And I one time I got out of the uh, van after a weekend of shows, and I just like because I thrashed so hard on stage, like I literally like had to like slide out and like have someone like push me up <laughs> and I was just like let me see I'm 20 I'm 26 now and if I keep it up like this I was like, I was like there's there's absolutely no way so I was like please make it as light as possible and I I think it's got to weigh like six or seven pounds like it's something ridiculous it's so light every time someone picks it's... it up they're just like wow but yeah it's it's literally perfect and it's it's a part of my skin